For ages, stories have been reinforcing values across cultures and has been a mechanism that has long existed in our society, which carries cultures, traditions from one generation to another. Previously limited to oral and written fables, folktales and mythologies, they have promulgated now to digital mediums. A compelling piece of story has the power to transport us into a world of fantasy, leaving room to identify our experiences with the characters. In recent days, the entertainment industry has taken a range of initiatives bringing to the fore more relatable, engaging and thought-provoking content. Now, our guest this morning is Emma Edosio, who is uh, popularly known simply as Emma. And she's a Nigerian filmmaker and cinematographer and a graduate of the famous New York Film Academy. Emma's stunning visuals and poetic feel for light and atmosphere has uh, and is still making a strong impact in the Nigerian film industry. Thank you for joining us. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, give us, you know, a quick um, journey, you know, how you got into the film making industry and the art of film making. Um, I actually stumbled into filmmaking. Um, like most Nigerian children, my mother wanted me to be either a doctor or a nurse. But I knew from a very young age that I wanted to do something in the creative. So after studying computer science for six years, I went to uh, work as an intern with uh, Clarice Peters at Capitol Hills. And that was where the journey started and I never looked back. And now, you know, that's an interesting way. I'm excited to hear the one of stumbling into because typically we hear I started from my mother's womb. I've always known. Nope. I mean, not to disregard that, right? But now let's talk about your journey. What is it about telling stories that fascinates you? One of the most fascinating things about telling stories is that you are like a magician. Um, you dream of characters and you see characters in your mind. And the fascinating thing is seeing these characters come to life. I think that's one of the most fascinating things about being a filmmaker and being able to tell stories about your communities. I, for most directors, if you ask them, filmmaking is therapy, it's very therapeutic. Filmmakers have questions that they have, and you know they ask questions through their their films, and that's like the most fascinating thing: the ability to speak to millions of people who will watch my films, and the ability to bring diverse characters to life. So that's that's fascinating for me. Right. Do you think you know women are given enough room for self-expression in the, in the movie industry across Africa? Um, and um, would you say you know more also needs to be done? Um, okay. There's a shift in the industry. Um, can, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. Awesome. I would say that there's a shift in the industry. If you look at the most powerful women in, in film, in, in Nollywood, that, that we have like really powerful women. Um, women like Mwabudu, uh, um, Tokwell Shin, you have people like Jade Oshiberu, Funke Akindeli, a lot of the most powerful men are coming out from Nollywood and from Africa. I think we're in the age right now where are you willing to do the hard work? And if you're really into the hard work, there's always a platform for your work. So I think right now it's not really about gender. It's really about who's ready to do the hard work and, you know, how much you're willing to fight to have a, a place on the table. And that's what I would say. Well done. Uh, now let's talk about influence because we cannot underestimate the importance of influence. You've mentioned some very powerful women in the industry. Uh, who would you say has played a significant role in helping you you know become who you of course i know clarence peters definitely has played a major role because that's where you sparked uh that's what sparked your interest but who would you say has been your role model um i think one of the people that i would say has been my role models are you know i have a lot of people and you know the key people are the people who have given me opportunities the key people are the people who have given me a chance and one is clarence i will always be grateful to him you know clarence has a strong work work ethic and that's where i learned how to you know literally i learned to believe that i could do things myself because you literally watch clarence shoot and go back to the editing board and just finish up the music video by morning so i learned discipline from clarence and another person that i really appreciate is muabudu muabudu gave a lot of women the opportunities i remember when i came out from film school and you know she, you know i i got a call and they said okay what have you done and i sent my cv and they gave me a project to 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 um to make i, I got a project to make and which was never heard in those days. You had to be known. But Moabud really gave a lot of women um, chances in the film industry. And, I, you know, that's really, really, that, that has really been 
um, great for me and my career. I mean, I think that it's it's wonderful that you mentioned that you were given an opportunity when you had no experience, you were straight out of film school. But there have been concerns raised by lots of people that what the industry, what they see in the industry is a recycling of faces and mm -hmm. that uh, there are not a lot of fresh faces that are being introduced into films. What's mm -hmm. your take on that? You know, I, like I keep saying, we're in exciting times. This is somebody who picked up a 250,000 Naira camera and shot a movie with our famous faces and the movie ended up on Netflix. This movie traveled to 30 international film festivals and won nine awards. You know, I think that we're in great times now where anybody can pick up a camera and create something and you have a global audience. So what I would say to this is, Get out of that. Um, I think there's a lot of talk and less creating. And I found myself in that place at one point in my life. And it was when I started creating and putting my voice out there, putting my work out there, that I began to get the recognition that I, I have today. So when people say, oh, we need famous faces, or people say, you know, they can't work in the industry, I always say to them, look, there's an industry, the world is global now. I made my film with this amount of money. It traveled around the world. I've made my second film. I'm going to Brazil with it. There's, a, there's room for everyone. Are you ready to do the hard work? Are you ready to create what you want to see on TV and in the sky? The world is open up for you. And that's what I keep telling people. All right. I just want to ask about, you know, uh, limitations, you know, that you've also, mm -hmm. you know, are dealing with, you know, making uh, films in Africa. There's some cultural and traditional conversations uh, of, you know, rather limitations, you know, that mm -hmm. may be stopping you from shooting certain type of movies or creating mm -hmm. uh, certain types of, uh, of stories. You know, tell us about your struggle with that. There are things happening in Africa that nobody gets to see on TV, mostly because of the culture and tradition. But I think that one of the hardest things a filmmaker faces, especially from Africa, is access to funding. Um, you know, it's survival mode here. An investor gives you, gives you a, a, a lot of money and says, I want my money back. And it's a business. So a lot of these people will create what can sell, right? Hardly anybody will create a story about female circumcision because would that make a lot of money in the, in the in the box office? So what I would say is access to funding. That's one of the things. The reason I think we do not create our cultural stories is not because there's anybody stopping us. It's because you don't have the funding to tell these kind of stories. And filmmaking is also a business. You make what works. But right now, there are a lot of young filmmakers that are coming up to tell stories that matter. And one of the ways that we do it is that, look, we, I'll give you an instance. How did I raise? I, I made my film with 4 million naira when you have a budget of 100 million naira. And I produced, directed, shot, and edited it because I believe these stories matter. And you have a lot of filmmakers that are beginning to make films that they feel matter and that's where the process is so i don't think there's a cultural limitation to the kind of stories we tell i think it's the funding and the, the the empowering a lot of filmmakers to be able to tell these kind of stories all right um pretty interesting you know and we're excited for you and the journey that you've been on so far looking forward to seeing you break even more boundaries and make even bigger movies um on your journey thank you so much Emma, for joining us this morning thank you for having me thank you